to get out of my house, what you about to do? With my f***ing pleasure. Good night. Today, the sausage scandal is finally served up over dinner in Potomac, and Bosun Joao is here to break down all the biggest moments from below deck. I never bitch about work, but this is insane. This is your reality check. This is so good. Nailed it. Happy Monday, everybody. Hope you all had a fabulous long weekend. I am Lindsay Rodriguez, and joining me today is Bosun Joao Franco from Below Deck Mediterranean. Hey, Welcome, going? Joao. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I am fantastic. Good. So happy that you could join me I'm today. To I've had you. some of your castmates on the show, yeah. but we're thrilled to meet you. And we always start this show with our top five. So are you ready? I, I am, I think. OK, <laughs> you're ready. It's top five time. <laughs> At number five, Chloe is clapping back at the mummy shamers. Now, over the weekend, Chloe shared a video of her 14 month old daughter, True, driving around in a little baby Bentley. Of course, this prompted social media users to criticize her spending habits in the comments because, you know, everyone's got an opinion. After some back and forth, Chloe finally responded, I hear you. And yes, I do choose to spoil my daughter. She will also be raised with values, responsibilities, chores, respect, and self love. We all work hard and we are able to spend our money in the way that we choose. I think that was so well said. What do you make of all the mummy shaming and just shaming in general that yeah. goes on in social media? We get it so often. I mean, uh, last season I had it 99% of the time, so mm -hmm. I understand it. Yeah. Um, she, I believe, is absolutely right in what she said in two ways. Um, as long as she brings up her children in the way she likes, then absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. Would I spend the money in the same way? No. But have I got it to spend? No. Yeah, so hey, good it, it point. It all depends, you know. I mean, it's all relative to, to how you live, I guess. Very, very yeah. well said. Very well said. <laughs> At number four, Julianne Huff has opened up about sex and intimacy with her husband, Brooks Like, on his new iHeartRadio podcast, How Men Think. She called her intimacy with her husband sacred, and that is why they have such an intimate relationship. Now, Jules went on to discuss the balance of being sexy versus cozy with a partner and said on air, my intimacy with Brooks is because he challenges me and he sees me for exactly who I am and accepts me for the fact that I can have chemistry and a connection with a lot of people, but I choose him every day. Now, that kind of echoes some of the things we've heard Hannah B say on this season of The Bachelorette, but I'm, I'm interested to know, what do you think the balance is between finding that intimacy and sexy time with just being cozy and in your sweats watching Netflix? Well, there has to be a happy medium. Mm -hmm. I think you both have to challenge yourselves um, in a way where you keep yourselves interested and you also have to have a comfort zone where you can, you know, relate to each other and, you know, get get onto the same page as each other. So it has to be a happy medium. I agree. I like, it's nice to make an effort for your partner, Absolutely. but sometimes you just want to look your worst and Absolutely. feel your worst well, and I mean, to have and, them still love you. And your partner you. must accept that. Exactly. I mean, if they accept that and also accept the challenges, um, you need as much the same as difference to, to keep going. I agree. Yeah. I had a partner once tell me that when I wake up in the morning, I'm like an alien, like hatching <laughs> from an egg. And we were together for six years. Also had so. a partner once. <laughs> <laughs> At number three, uh, <laughs> check out this traveling model mama. On Sunday, Heidi Klum showed off her amazing figure in a series of posts on Instagram after landing in Tokyo. And it looks like she has got a lot of stuff to unpack. In one post, Heidi poses in front of a large window overlooking the city while wearing a red lingerie set from her brand. Heidi Klum Intimates, and she's got a ton of clothes there because sometimes you don't <laughs> pack light. Now, you are always away. You're always yes. on the high seas. So yep. have you mastered the art of just packing the essentials? I have up until probably last season. I, I, because of Colin, I guess, I, I own a lot more pairs of shoes now. Okay, he's a shoe freak. <laughs> yeah, he's a shoe freak. Oh, I mean, find that and out. now I get it. Now, I mean, when you live in New York and you live this side of town, it, you, you do have to maintain image, I guess. That's true. Um, I've learned to pack um, pretty light, I guess, but I've got a wardrobe probably in every on every continent at the moment that's pretty cool so but on, on her side I see that you know with guests that we have on the sh that for three days they will bring a huge like that's one of my pet peeves oh. is carrying that bag you know onto onto the boat and then carrying it off when I know I've only seen them in three suits so. oh you would hate me then because I'm the kind of person that will honestly like take a ball gown yeah, to go yeah. camping because yeah. you never know like, you I'm never just, know in case they've got a ball exactly. in, in, a, in a campground in the yeah. woods <laughs> at number two David Foster may have just married Catherine McPhee, but his duties as a modern husband are already being put to the test. This weekend, Catherine shared glimpses of their honeymoon in Italy on Instagram and asked fans to judge David's photo skills on a scale of 1 to 10. Now, 
of course, we know that the Instagram boyfriend is a very real thing. There's even an Instagram account dedicated yes. to it. I have two questions for you. First of all, have you seen some crazy Instagram husband photo shoots when you've been out at sea? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, you'd be surprised how many husbands ask the wives and whoever else to take the photos of them. Right. And then judge it. Everyone looks at themselves first and says, no, take the photo yeah, again. Yeah, even so if everyone else looks amazing. Everyone looks amazing. They, they pinpoint, I mean, I do it. I look at me and, oh my God, no, next, you know. Next, okay. And everyone else is happy about their photo. So yeah, it, it works both ways. And then second question, <laughs> have you yourself ever been an Instagram boyfriend? I am right now. An You're an Instagram, yeah, I'm an Instagram boyfriend. boyfriend. Have I, you ever put yourself in a precarious position to get the perfect shot of your girl? Always. Oh, you're a good man. <laughs> and and you, you have to take five or 10 shots at least. So oh, well, yeah, minimum. Minimum, <laughs> minimum. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now at number one, it's Real Housewife, Real Housewife of Potomac's Ashley Darby. She is a mother, yay. She announced yesterday that she gave birth to her first child, a son, with her husband, Michael, by her side. Now on Instagram, she shared, I never thought this day would come. This is the happiest day of our life. So a huge congratulations to the Darbys. We've seen their fertility troubles and relationship turmoil played out on Real Housewives of Potomac, but it's great that they finally found happiness and have had success in starting a family together. So do you think they'll get a spin-off like Portia did from Real Housewives of Atlanta? Um, well, if the fans want it, you know, everyone, I think everyone should have a spin-off. If they, I mean, everyone deserves one if they're, they're worthy of it. I so. feel like this is his way of saying that you want a spin-off. Oh, I think, <laughs> yeah, Wild Safaris in Africa or something. Oh, we could, that, we could call it Wild with Joao. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. All right. I didn't even have to come up with that. That's yeah, fine. I'm now the executive producer uh, of your show. There you go. There's, also a, chance that, <laughs> there's also a chance that maybe Ashley and Michael might want to leave the show, do you think? Because there has been some controversy surrounding him this season and now they have a baby to look after. Do you think yeah. we'll see... I think exit? generalizing everyone goes through something on shows, you know, whether they they carry on with it, uh, accept it and go, move on, you know, to bigger to higher ground with it, or decide to leave. That is a personal choice that they, they have to make. Yeah, we'll um, have to wait and yeah. see what happens. <laughs> but while we're on the subject of Real Housewives of Potomac, let's touch on that very salacious episode that was on last night because the cat's finally out of the bag and Ashley knows that the ladies heard her husband make a comment about sausages. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> she feels like your relationship with Michael is fraudulent. Robin was there, I wasn't there. What the f Michael walked past us and was like, yeah, I would suck his No, he and did you all not! And now, although Giselle was the one who brought this up, it was Robin who took the blame for being a bad friend. Watch. Robin ain't co signed nothing false. She did. I know what I heard. All this talk about him being gay, it's so stupid. I'm not, I didn't say that. But if you know that All that I is something that has bothered me in the past, I don't why know that. You... You're at the Robin, gay pride festival. Really? Why would that bother you? I'm right. done. So, Joao, what do you think? Was Robin being a good friend or a bad friend? Should she have not told Ashley anything to begin with? What do you make of this? I definitely feel like if there's something to be spoken about between friends, it should be said. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, there's ways and how to, to come about saying it. Um, whether that's right or not, it depends on your friendship. But, I mean, if, if, I, if my girlfriend was talking about, you know, funny comments like that, I would definitely want to know. Right. And if I think I heard one of my friends, you know, something like on, on that side of things, I would definitely say something. But would you yeah. say it in a little bit more of a, a private yeah, yeah, space, maybe? I think a more private, I mean, if it's that serious, uh, private conversations should be had amongst friends. Yeah. yeah. Do you think Ashley should forgive Robin? If they're close enough friends, then absolutely. But I mean, here's the thing, because Giselle is the one that brought this to the table, yes. literally, to yeah. begin with, and <laughs> she's not getting any of the blame, yeah. and everything's being directed toward Robin. So don't you think that Giselle should sort of, like, stand up and own what she did? Yeah, I mean, it, it, as long as you're happy with, with what you've brought, you know, to the table, then uh, you'd have... I would definitely say that, you, that she should own it and... You know, I guess uh, it depends on their friendship. If they're yeah. that strong enough of, as friends, they will forgive each other eventually. Um, they, they need to just iron it out, I guess. Uh, yeah. Well, have to wait and see. <laughs> have to wait and see. We are going to take a very quick break, but when we come back, we're going to be going below deck in the Mediterranean, so don't go anywhere. I'm feeling a little bit of pressure just because we won down, of course. I've never felt anxiety like this before in my life.
Welcome back to the show. I am still joined by Joao Franco from Bravo's Below Deck Mediterranean. Thanks so much for being here today. I appreciate it. That's, yeah, it's been great. Yes, well, still more to come. Before we get into your show, we have to send out congratulations to Jesse Palmer. He was The Bachelor from season five, and he is no longer a bachelor. He just announced on DailyMail.com that he is engaged to his girlfriend of more than two years, Emily Fardo. Fantastic. Jesse popped the question while the two were on a romantic trip to Paris. Now, first of all, would you ever do The Bachelor? Um, well, I wouldn't now. I had been approached before uh, to do it. Okay. Uh, at, at the time, my girlfriend tore up the card and <laughs> made me walk away. But oh, wow. I think uh, I can hardly handle one relationship. So, that yeah, that would be quite tough. Managing 30 <laughs> yeah. would be a little out of your wheelhouse. Uh, yeah. Well, then, in that case, who of your shipmates would you nominate to be The Bachelor? Uh, a bachelor to, to be loyal or a bachelor just to be on The Bachelor? <laughs> Ooh, give us both. Give us both. Who would be on it for the wrong reasons and who would be on it for well, the right reasons? Well, I can reasons? absolutely say Colin would be on it for the right reasons, yeah, I can see of that. course. Yeah. Uh, and Jack would be on it for the wrong reasons. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Obviously. I knew you were going to say that. Um, and can you tell us any more about your girlfriend? How does she handle you being away for, for so long? Yeah, she's been great. I mean, we have found a happy medium. Uh, we figured out you know, that we're, we're getting to know each other, it, you know, on and off, it's been fantastic because it's not just thrown into the deep end. So we can still Love be ourselves. Love you made a seat on there. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, we can still be ourselves and we can also, you know, figure out how we are as, as people. So yeah, that's been great. That's yeah. fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah, and she's a lucky girl to have such a good Instagram <laughs> oh, boyfriend. Exactly. It's all about all right. this. Yeah, <laughs> right? So let's get back into Below Deck Mediterranean. And before we dive in to the details, can we ask you to recap this season so far in 20 seconds or less. Okay. All right, so we're going to put 20 seconds on the clock. You don't have to use the full 20 seconds, right. but 20 seconds on the clock and go. Uh, I find it very, uh, very extreme, high pressure, uh, lots of changes. Um, very diverse, uh, you know, a lot of hap things happening with the boat on and off. Things just change. It's all about the change. All about the change. And <laughs> yeah. with five seconds to, to spare. Very good. Crazy. <laughs> Craziness. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> now, let's throw it back to last week when Captain Sandy gave Chef Mila her marching orders. Watch. The chef is the chef, man. It's, they have to be good or gone. Just how it is. <clears throat> as a human being, I have all the compassion in the world, but as a captain, I have to let you go. So as a viewer, I definitely wasn't shocked this moment yes. happened. How did the rest of the crew feel? Was it a relief? It was a relief. Uh, again, as crew uh, on the deck side, we didn't know so much of what was going on inside. Um, as everyone could see, I was very unaware of the comments made in the van at that stage. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we are so close together at, at, to, to be a team, yeah. we need to work well together. So if there's a, a thorn in the side, you need to take it up. Yeah, so no one sort of thought that she should be given one last chance. I think she was given more than enough of a chance. Yeah. yeah. Was there any other culinary catastrophe that we didn't get to see from Chef Mila? Not necessarily. I think um, we, I mean, right in the beginning, her food on the crew side, which everyone, who everyone asked, it was actually great. Mm -hmm. Um, I think under that pressure of, of being on a yacht um, over and above where she's come from, you, you tend to lose the ball once and then it builds momentum and you can't keep up. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Well, then in the end, it was Anastasia that stepped up from third yes. stew to head chef, and there was a move that made her very nervous. A third stew does laundry. She makes beds and she has somebody to look to for direction. As the chef on the boat, you are your entire team. What am I gonna order? What meals am I gonna make? I'm the one doing everything. So Anastasia might not have had much confidence in herself, but yes. did you have confidence in her? Absolutely, I think we were, with the limited um, options we had, we had to back her up in the best way we could. Yeah. So, um, you know, with, with things that come up, that charter she did fantastically. Um, and as a team, again, we, we really strive to try and back people up so that where she can't keep up with, we make up for it. Yeah, so, you're like yeah. trying to set her up for success. Absolutely. Yeah, and of course, all of this was going on at the same time that you had a primary guest whose daughter was using the boat to yes. double as a set for her music video. Yeah. Watch this. Excited to see some of this video clip. They're already doing some shooting. Focus, I'll be focused on the money. I'm gonna move the vessel because the client's making a music video and the backdrop in Cannes isn't as great as the backdrop across the harbor. 
lot going on. Yes. On one hand, you've got everyone sort of trying to fill in the gaps because you're down a person. Yes. Then you had to move the boat a few times in this episode, actually. You saw yeah. it get moved there for an aesthetic purpose. And then later, because of the, the rockiness. I mean, yes. How stressful is that? It does get stressful, especially, I mean, if, if everyone on deck are not, uh, you know, stepping up to the plate and doing as much as they can do, um, a lot of work falls down on everyone else. Mm. Um, so at any given stage like this, the stress is insane. We don't know fully where the captain's coming from. So, I mean, she knows what she's doing, yeah. but we, we're stressed, you know, and very tired. So um, at the end of the day, it works out for us, you know, and that's what matters. Mm -hmm. um, at that given moment, everyone is under pressure. Yeah, so. but everyone, I guess, bands together Absolutely, when yeah. it matters as well, which was great. Now, was this a first for you, having a music video being shot at the same time that you're trying to provide exemplary service to your, your clients? It, it's not the first time I've been on a, a vessel, obviously, I, I can't say, but um, we've been on, except it was a much bigger vessel, so oh, cool. m many more crew. Um, and because there were many more crew, we stuck to our shift times. Okay. And, you know, it wasn't as, as extreme as this. Who uh, was it? Can you tell me the artist? I cannot. Was it Pete Diddy? Was it 50 Cent? Was it? Uh, <laughs> you know what? You probably, you're so close, but I'm not telling you. Oh my God, was it J-Lo <laughs> when she did the Ben Affleck one? She was on a boat in that. Uh, were you bummed that your cameo got cut from the, the final edit of the music video when you, the guys were in I the... was very much not bummed at all. I mean, <laughs> I, think, I think Colin might have been a bit bummed, but yeah. I was so happy that that didn't pitch. And I'm Aww. glad that that's all they showed because there was a lot more that I wasn't very happy about <laughs> Oh, really? More on that later, I hope. What would you think about a Colin slash Ashley collaboration? Because Colin likes to rap. Absolutely, and... yeah. I mean, I think anyone with Colin, um, you know, to get him going in the music industry would be great. And he even yeah. said it was so nice for him to have her on the boat and to have that yes. music. It was like a breath of fresh air. Absolutely, FM, familiarization. He... You know, he's not from yachts. So anything that reminds him from where he is, you know, get a, like maybe a sense of nostalgia uh, yeah. somewhat. So, yeah. He's such a sweet soul, that he's one, such isn't a sweet he? Soul. He really is. <laughs> <laughs> right now, we're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll be doing the most with Joao. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. I am still here with Below Deck Mediterranean's very own Joao Franco. Hey. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah? yeah, yeah. That's about to change. <laughs> We're going to put you I'm on ready, the spot. I'm <laughs> I've been put on the spot before. I'll okay. Be okay. <laughs> well, I mean, look, I mean, you're no, you're no stranger to pressure. Yes. Now we're going to put, put pressure on you to play a game that we like to call the most. The most. Okay. So here's how it works. I'm going to give you a scenario, and then I need you to tell me which of your castmates you think would be most suited in that situation. Uh -huh. Sound good? Yep. Okay, let's get right into it. Who is the most likely to get stranded on an island? Jack. Jack. Absolutely. And in fact, am I going to answer all of these as Jack? You might answer a lot of them as Jack. All right, Jack okay. is the most likely to be stranded on the island. Who would be most likely to capsize the yacht? Oh, God. Uh, Jack. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just call this Jack show or oh, what? <laughs> why do you think Jack would capsize the yacht? Well, I, I, he's quite, uh, I mean, ignorance is bliss. He doesn't realize that he's done something wrong or he hasn't done something at all. And he'd happily go along his, his day right. without even looking back. So. And they'd be like, where's this water coming <laughs> from? Oh, crap. And ironically, he's an engineer. I don't understand it. That's bizarre. <laughs> all right, I feel like I know the answer to this, but who is the most likely to get into a bar fight? To be honest, probably Travis. Oh, Travis, yeah, yeah. not Jack. Um, okay. Travis, not Jack. Yeah. Why is he quite volatile in nature? Yeah, he's, he's pretty fierce. He's, he's uh, you know, he stands up for absolutely anything. Okay. Um, nice, nice attribute, you know, and also it can get you into a lot of trouble. There's so. a pro and con there uh, for between sure. Between myself and Jack, anyway. Yeah. Oh, sorry, myself and Travis, anyway. Okay. <laughs> Who is most likely to become a pirate of the Mediterranean? Hmm. I'd, I'd have to go Jack again. Jack, I mean, if you give him a bottle, of, if you give him a bottle of rum and put him on an <laughs> island, he'll be fine. There's nothing more to it. Well, look yeah. out, Johnny Depp. He's coming for your job. <laughs> yeah. Who is the most likely to fall overboard? Most likely to fall over overboard, Colin. Colin, yeah, yeah. He gets, he, you know, under under a lot of pressure, he gets a little bit clumsy, which is it's sweet. You know, he he tries his absolute best, and yeah. he kind of he, he tends to try and rush. Yeah. And then, I mean, you'll see it. You'll see in this season. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who is the most likely to repurpose their uniform as a stripper's costume? No. Oh, does that go without say? No. Let's see. I don't know. Does it? Is it is it just for the deck team or everyone? You, everyone. Oh, I see. Well. 
Aisha would definitely use her uniform for a stripper's outfit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she really speaks her mind. Oh, yeah. And I mean, yeah, some of the really stuff that has like come out of her back, even in the first episode where she yeah. was talking about things that she learned at a young age, yeah, I was yeah. like, wow. I like her. <laughs> I like her. Who is the most likely to cameo in a music video? Cameo in a music video? Definitely Colin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Colin. he deserves it anyway, so Absolutely. he'd love to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, well, thank you very much okay. for playing uh, the most with us. Don't go anywhere, though, because when we come back, Joao and I are actually going to visit another moment from reality TV history. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. It is that time, time for another reality moment, and this one really packs a punch. Enjoy. What are your names? Abby and Lisa. Okay. In this 2010 episode of The X Factor UK, best friends Abby Johnston and Lisa Parker give an audition that starts off pretty bad. Can everybody stop laughing at me? Get you. And then goes downhill from there. Shut up! <laughs> Eventually, the teenagers took a stab at singing. Fared much better at insulting Natalie Imbruglia. The singing was not great, girls. Who are you? Meh. <laughs> Ultimately, inserts turn to injury when Abby hits Lisa across the face. <laughs> Abby and Lisa's train wreck of an audition is one of the greatest moments in reality history, and it's one Simon Cowell won't soon forget either. You have the worst attitude of any contestants. I have ever met. Oh, wow. And that's big coming from Simon, that's huge. right? Well, they made reality, that's for sure. Yes. Now, um, Captain Sandy was on the show last week, and she said that there have been incidents on the boat when guests have sort of gotten a little bit violent with yes. each other and bottles have been brandished. Can you give yeah. us any more scoop on those kinds of incidents? Well, you will get to see something that happened this season, definitely, um, oh. which is, yeah, it, it's a matter of a decision that I had to take. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, and not it's to do with guests anyway. To do with guests. Yeah, um, it happens. You know, when you add alcohol, you're fueling a fire, and, yeah. you know, these kinds of ha things happen, and especially on a vessel, you know, the safety of everyone is precedent. You have to make sure that everyone's fine. Um, you know, Captain Sandy has a lot of pressure, so if anything goes down, we need to make sure that everything's safe. Of course. Yeah. Is there also a little bit of, like, we're in international waters, it's lawless out here, so... I mean, the, the, the boat carries its own law, oh, so it's international law. So okay. um, whatever happens when, when the vessel is within a country, they abide by those laws. I see, yeah. I see. But when you think you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean, people tend to act a little bit crazy. I so. am sure, and then you add a lot of money <laughs> yes, to that exactly. as well, and you have like yeah. the affluenza. Absolutely, mm -hmm. guests and crew. <laughs> yes, well look, it was such a pleasure getting to know you today, Joao. I appreciate um, it, thank you so much, for... it's been fantastic oh, being here. thank you, yeah, we're so excited for the rest of the season yes. of Below Deck Mediterranean, so make sure you're watching that, guys. That's tonight, 9 p.m. on Bravo. And as of today, you can catch our show on Twitter every day at 4.30 p.m. Eastern by following at people on Twitter. And of course, you can catch full episodes on YouTube or on our People TV page, so make sure you do that. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Thank guys, so for joining much. us today. I'm Lindsay Rodriguez, and I will check you tomorrow.